This Pitch Breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins, attorneys for Charlotte's startup community. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Wesley Moore, uh, founder and executive director of QuaRule. And QuaRule automates compliance and risk management activities, primarily in financial institutions. And I know you're all excited about having a compliance conversation this morning. <laughs> Everybody loves that, especially me. Um, after 30 years in compliance, uh, and then five years before that in military school, I learned a little bit about compliance philosophy. If it exists, there are rules that apply to it. And chances are, there are dozens of rules that apply to it, and all a little bit different, and sometimes contradictory, and sometimes rather fuzzy. This is the problem that we address at QuaRule. The banks have done miserably through the last period of increased market regulation. They have uh, applied 1980s technology to uh, 2017 problems. So uh, after many years in compliance, I started to think about how am I going to survive this, right? We saw a thousand percent increase in regulatory requirements. And so we looked around and decided the best way would be to teach the computers the meaning of the regulations. That that's the only way you're going to automate anything in compliance because that's all that matters. And so we focused on how to take text and extract the logic from that text. How to use English as a coding language. And we have, uh, we have succeeded. And we use that technology in two ways to build values for, value for companies. And there are many more. But the first two are, first, we explain where and how the regulations apply at every point in your business. Okay? That alone saves millions and millions of dollars a year. Second, we find violations and we explain why they're violations. How much fun is that? I mean, that is like compliance heaven right there. So, We've been, uh, uh, you know, as I said, I've been in compliance for a very long time. I'm surrounded by uh, engineers uh, from some of the top institutions in the world, some of them leaders in AI for many, many years. We're finishing products now within this program. I hope to show them to you on uh, the 20th. And we are raising a seed round. We've been bootstrapping up until this point. I'm happy to say that as a part of this program, um, I got up the courage to actually make a couple of million dollar proposals this week to major financial institutions who want global help. So we'd love to be a part of the Idea Fund family and thank you all for uh, coming and listening. listening. I have never been more excited about compliance than I ever have. <laughs> I understand, that's, that's why I love getting up in the morning. Um, So uh, that was really good. Do you have a product? We have, uh, we have four products in our product line that succeed at producing um, so, so, automated controls. So they exist now? They exist right now. Do you have any customers? We do not have customers yet. We've completed four proofs of concept with Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, a teeny broker dealer, and McGuire Woods. And our market is enter big enterprises. By, I mean, we can do small enterprises, but we're starting with the big ones because um, that's where the most value is. So we work with firms like Citigroup and Accenture and Bank of America. So if you talk to the, an executive at one of these organizations and you say, I have a machine that's going to expose all of your regulatory violations, <laughs> does this please them or frighten them? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm serious. Like, do they want this or are they like, oh shit, keep you away? So the, the law yeah. already requires that all of their regulatory violations be exposed. So there's nothing to hide anymore. Anyone who thinks they can hide compliance violations is living in the 80s. So that's how I'd respond. It's best that you know and be able to deal with it. Yeah, so I don't normally give people feedback on like their presentation or anything. You're just great. My very favorite thing that you did is when the timer went off, you didn't care, you just kept going. It was beautiful. Oh. Do that, <laughs> seriously, do that every time. Just keep going. Just talk to them, they make you shut up. It was good. Yeah. My yeah. wife notices that. Yeah, too. it was good. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. What? Second thing that I agree with. It was good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah my, my, my big question is every time that I listen to a pitch, I'm trying to understand um, the motivation of the customer. And I. I get what you're saying, but I don't believe it. 
And, and it's not only important to get what you're saying, but I have to believe it. And if, if, if like you're, you're sort of sounding, when Chris is asking the question, a little condescending, you better believe me. And, and I think you, you can't do it that way because the investor is not gonna, is gonna move on. I think you need to uh, really convince somebody that somebody will be truly motivated to buy your product in any way that you can. Like if it's, if this is because they're being forced to buy the product, that's fine. But, but you gotta explain that because if I don't understand the industry well enough, I'm not gonna get there. So I guess that would be my biggest question. I think you, uh, you did a great job and I think it didn't matter how the, um, the pitch was structured because you seem to understand what you're talking yeah. about. And so I don't think it was important to talk about necessarily your team or your market size because you do have credibility. The way in which you communicate, it comes across that you've been doing this for a while. But I'm not convinced that you know how to sell this. You, I, I'm more convinced that you know how to build a solution that works. I just don't know that anybody's gonna care to buy it. I just need to be convinced about that. I, I would say, um most of the people that I talk to have lived through things like the bond crisis from, from the chair that faces the SEC. So they understand very well uh, the product. I do have a problem with investors because venture investors haven't been regulated. Yeah. <laughs> they're, no, they're, we are. They're just starting to experience We are regulated. For the first time. But, but when, you're, when you're working in a large firm like I did at Wells Fargo, we had 26 lines of business under my care in 17 legal entities across the world, and that was just the capital markets piece. And so what I, what, what I can tell you is that, uh, you know, the 20 or, or $25 million that they spent on compliance was totally wasted because they really didn't want to know. If you really right. want to right. know, right. Yeah. you're going to talk to me. If you think you can get away with it, you're not. And there are plenty of, plenty, that, I yeah, mean, yeah, compliance. Well, right, and that's kind of the point I was driving at is that like, they certainly have to appear to want to know, right? Right, but do they really want to know? They're doing the work now in Excel spreadsheets. They're dealing with yeah, but, but tens that, of thousands of Yeah, but you're not answering now. the question I asked, which is do they, do they really want to know, or they do, do they want to have plausible deniability and make it look like they were trying to know? They're going to get caught. I mean, what, what story do you want to start? Know. Yeah, you're They're not all going to get caught. Yeah. Yes. And, and I, I, I perfected how to do that. Yes. Let's yeah. ask questions yeah. first. Yeah. Well, I'll start with this. I did a calculation. One answer is worth $225 in time at a typical bank. Because you gotta find the person, you gotta find the other person, you gotta ask the question by email, maybe you get a voicemail, then you gotta negotiate the question, and so forth and so forth. $225 per question across an organization with hundreds of thousands of people. That's, that's, that's a multi that's hundred million dollar value right there. I'm sorry if I didn't answer your question clearly. Nervous. Yes. If I want to back them up, because I've worked in financial services for 18 years, this is a product, this is a problem, it's a real issue. Uh, PNC Bank is just looking at using high damage Watson. So I kind of want to build you up in that way to kind of tear you down. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a data scientist, right? That's, that's my passion, my desire. What you've just told me is that you've unlocked the secrets of natural language processing, which is a huge data science problem, right? And so to me, you're more of a data science company. We are managed to tackle that problem, and I'm, like I said before, IBM is actually entering this space with what, right? So are you competing head to head against IBM's offering? Because so as a data scientist, let me let me tell you, we have a product for you. As for the data scientists in the room, we can take text, anything that's written down, and produce a, a formalized data model. Okay, for semantic technology and artificial okay, intelligence from text, no ontologist involved. Okay, so um, uh, as far as Watson is concerned, Watson was made to answer questions. Okay, as long as you're answering questions about trivial things, like what, what's in the regulation, you'll get an answer. What you won't get is how does that regulation apply to my business? That's another so, $300 million. We have one other question. Yes. I noticed when you mentioned your four proofs of concept, you mentioned two banks, a broker, dealer, and then a law firm. Yes. And it seems, so I'm an attorney, I especially focus on the law firm piece. Do you view your product as a tool for legal service providers or as a direct competitor to service providers? 
Our tool, is, our tool is a machine that understands the regulations and can tell you where the violations are. If you're a lawyer and you've got till Friday to deliver umpty ump gigabytes of trade data to the CFTC, you'd like to know today what's in that, what's in that data. That's the market for legal services. Is it a different product services. or is yes. it the same product? That you would market it's exactly do. the same product. We, we have a data, a data model in semantic technology that makes it possible for us to work with a firm like yours, take customer data quickly, and within a couple days turn around reasoned answers based on the regulations. We're working with a firm now just to give you an, a use case. They have 150,000 documents that they have to review to figure out which documents belong to the institutional side and which documents belong to the consumer side. And so we, are, we have we are building in the semantic uh, search capabilities necessary for that, and we have the domain expertise to find those provisions. So, Leslie, first of all, in any two-minute pitch, the objective is to generate interest. You've got a lot of questions here, so you've done a very good job with that. Um, secondly, I go back, we used the word use case before, right? So, something I would really focus on is creating a use case where somebody spent a lot of money, right? and how your solution is going to change that. You, you started, you gave the intro, right? They applied 2007, eight technology to 2017 problems. Then describe what that is, the benefits to the institution, right? I, my suggestion would be, look, this is check the box. They wanna spend as little as possible. And we're gonna help them spend a lot less. Okay. Very good point. I can hold my breath for two minutes, so it's, it's sort of yeah. intimidating what I It is out. tough. But the, the fact is that the, all large banks have tripled their compliance staff since 2010. You need to give the use case. I think you did a good job. I think the, the thing I will work on is uh, trying to uh, demonstrate how you're going to uh, sort of do, uh, how you're going to acquire your customers. That, that to me is the thing that you probably know uh, not as much about the problem itself. How are you going to go get customers? If you can convince an investor that you know how to attract customers in any way that you think is the best way, and I may not, that may not be intuitive, uh, then I think you have a really good um, value proposition. Oh, I, let me mention, okay, I, I have felt like I've been bullshitting people for the first two years because I'm on the business side and on the technology side, we really discovered in those first two years how much work we had to do. And so we have not been doing any marketing, but we have had deep conversations and we are negotiating projects now with some of the world's largest banks. That is traction, okay? The fact that I can get into those conversations is good. How I get into that, we can, we can talk more about it, but, but it's a compliance thing, okay? When you talk to the right people who have this stress and, and risk uh, being arrested for, for you know, the actions of their traders and salespeople, it's, it's a different conversation. So. Thank you all so much.